Hi everyone, it's Bethany. Welcome back to my channel. Really quickly, I am going to make my end of the year teacher gifts and I thought it would be really fun to do a little coffee card with a little gift card inside just as an end of the year thank you. So I'm going to use this really fun die set that I found and I'll link it down below. It is a cute coffee cup and I thought it was so adorable and I thought it'd be really fun to just slip a little gift card in inside. So it comes with a variety of little dies. I'll link it down below in case you would like to take a closer look at what it includes. And then it comes with the little lid and then it has a little outline layer that's going to help us create a shaker card. Now you don't have to make this into a shaker card. There are definitely a lot of ways that you could use this die set, but I thought it would be really fun to do a little shaker card and I can't wait to show you how this turns out. So I'm going to use that set and then also here it is. In a different die set, I got a little gift card uh, pocket. And this is a little die that will make a little gift card pocket that you can just really quickly cut out of any colored cardstock that you'd like and then very quickly assemble glue onto your card and then you have a little storage area for your gift card. I think this is amazing and knowing that I can put a gift card in anything or any card that I'm making from here on out by simply having this little die it makes me so happy because I love doing gift cards for things. So again, this comes separately from this collection of dies, but I will link them down below so you all always know what I'm using in this video. I also have a little piece of scrap cardstock. I need to pull a couple more pieces of scrap cardstock. If you remember in my video last weekend, I did a really, really fun um, surprise box with this fun patterned paper. And I'm gonna be bringing some more of those scraps in because as promised, I'm doing a lot of fun things with those scraps that came off of that project. I'll link it up here in case you missed it. And then I have this really fun collection of smooth cardstock and it has some fun colors in it. And we're gonna pull one of the colors to use. I have some additional stamps and ink and then some really fun filler for the shaker. So let's go ahead and get started. So to begin, I'm going to set some of these dies off to the side. We will come back to these later, but I want to make the actual base of the card. So I'm going to be bringing in this piece right here. Now, to be quite honest, this is going to cover an entire piece of paper long ways. So I have an eight and a half by 11 piece of 110 pound cardstock. I'll link the cardstock I like to use down below, but it's going to take up every single inch of this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that I place this, so that I have enough room on both ends, but I'm going to tape it down so I don't have any shifting. And I'm going to tape it down for another reason, which you'll see in just a moment. So bringing in this tape here, I really like it. I've been using it for just about all the things and I am going to position that and I'm simply going to put a piece of tape right in the middle there. Easy, easy, easy. Okay, as you can see, I'm going to run this through my spell binders, but as you can see, it's going to be a little too long for my cutting machine. So what I'm going to do is because I already positioned that tape there, that was the other reason for that tape, is I'm going to run this through twice, but shift it in the middle or before I run it in a second time. So I'm just going to place this side down and then put my plate on top. I'm going to run this through and then when I run it through the next time, I will just move this piece up so that the last about, two, well, probably about a quarter, uh, the last quarter gets cut. Okay, so I'm making sure, well, by the time I have it positioned, it's probably like the last third, but making sure all of it is fitting within my cutting area, I'm just going to really quickly send this through and then we'll reposition and get the rest cut out as well. And as mentioned, I will shift the rest up so that the rest of the die is in the cutting field. And then I'm just gonna turn this around just so I can do it this way now. Okay, so the rest has cut out. So now I can take this out and you'll see I have a full cut. See how that works? So this is actually the first time I've encountered a die that has been longer than my die cutting machine, but easy peasy, you just shift it halfway through and it's all perfectly fine. 
Again, I use 110 pound cardstock for this base of the card here. So now I can just set this piece aside. And what I'll do next is just fold my card really quickly. Okay, so really quickly folding down my card. And now you will see that I have a cute little coffee cup. How sweet is this? I love it. I think that's just so fun. And then of course, as you can see, it opens up. Okay, so there is the base of our card all ready to go. Now I'm going to grab a little pink piece here. Let's see, I'm gonna grab, let's do that. Okay, that looks great. So I'm going to use this die here and cut it out of my pink piece. Okay, so now I have my little pink piece cut out. And I also have quite a bit of extra here, so you can save this for another project if you'd like. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And always keep your scraps because card making, especially when you're working on A2 size cards, which are my favorite size to work with, you're given just a tiny bit of space to work with, so scraps can go a long way. So I have this piece there, and I think that looks really, really nice. So the next thing that I'm going to do very quickly is I'm gonna cut this out one more time, but I'm going to cut it out with another piece of white cardstock. So any cardstock will do. I'm just gonna use an 80 pound cardstock. And this is just going to, you'll see a little later visually why I'm doing this, but it's gonna provide just a little bit of a template for me to work with. Okay, wonderful. Again, there are some extras that come off, but I will save those for another project because now we have a nice little coffee cup look. So this would be fun to build on another project as well. Okay, done with this particular die now. And now I will go ahead and cut out a piece of patterned paper. I'm gonna do my lid. I thought it would be fun to have my lid in a little pattern. So when you are using a pattern paper, it's important that you kind of position it around where you'd like it. So obviously you can see based on where you place the die, how different you can have this piece look. So I think right about there looks really nice. It's bringing in a lot of different colors that I like and that I think will be really cute and pretty. So I'll go ahead and just tape my die right there so it doesn't shift and cut that out as well. Okay, and then I have the little lid to my coffee cup. All right, just about done with cutting here and then we can start assembling, but there are a few other things that we still need to cut out. Okay, so as you can see, everything's starting to build on itself here. And now I'm going to make the sleeve. So I do need to grab some additional pattern paper, but we're gonna make the little coffee sleeve out of these two pieces or these two little dies. Grabbing my little envelope here, I like to keep my scrap cardstock inside and I am going to find another piece from that collection that I was just worry, working with. And this is the one I think will be really fun. So I think yep, that'll work perfect. I was gonna trim it down, but no need. I'm going to place my little dies. Now, because this has uh, right angle lines here, I'm going to make sure that I really line up my die so that it is perpendicular. I'm sorry, so it's parallel with the lines. So as you can see, I'm just gonna make sure that the side of my die or the bottom of my die really is going to be just in line with the lines on this paper. It's little things like that that are gonna take your design and make them that much better. I'll show you once it's cut out why I did that if, that, if it's confusing you at this point. Okay, taking another piece of tape, I have a scrap piece over here. Again, just making sure I line up the edge of my die with the lines, make sure they're running parallel very nicely. And then once again, I'll just tape that down. Okay, let me send this through and then we're gonna bring some acetate in so that we can start constructing our shaker. Okay, there we go. And then, there they come out. Once you see the little cuts, you can see how nice that looks because everything is nice and straight. Do you see what I mean there? Okay, now these pieces have some little score lines on them. We will address those in a little while when we assemble the little coffee sleeve, but for now, let's just set those to the side. Okay, we'll go ahead and 
take these dies off and the last thing is we are going to cut out our little piece of acetate. So I just have this clear acetate sheet pack from Cricut and I just this is what I've had in my collection for a while. Let me know what acetate you prefer to use. I am going to simply trim this down because it comes in 12 by 12 sheets. Again, I'm shopping my craft space this year, so I'm trying to use what I have instead of buying new. So this is why I'm using this. And I will go ahead and just trim down a piece because I'm bringing in this die once more. That is the little shadow of the, or kind of like the outline layer for the coffee cup. Okay, now I haven't found a way to cut acetate on my spell binders. And I've even put a little cardstock shim. Usually that's my go-to when I need to just get a little bit of a deeper cut, at least so far in my journey with my spell binders. But I'll show you what worked for me as I was figuring out how to make this card. So I am going to grab a piece of 110 pound cardstock that I like to use as my shim. I usually use it for embossing, but I found it works well with this as well. So I'm just grabbing a little piece of cardstock here and then I'm going to place it right on my base plate here or the platform. And then what I'll do is I'll just sandwich like normal my um, bottom cutting plate and then my acetate. Sorry, it's a little obviously hard to see because it's clear, but bottom cutting plate acetate and then I will do my top cutting plate okay so there we go and I am gonna tape that in place only because I did trim that acetate just perfectly for this so that I wouldn't waste any but I don't want my my die to accidentally shift and then not cut properly okay so let me send this through and then I'll show you what I ended up doing Okay, so I ran that back and forth a couple of times and it still doesn't give me a cut through. However, it does give me some cut marks where I can really, really see where I need to cut. So that's what I decided to do is instead I decided to use that as a, just a little cut line. Okay, so I'm just going to take my scissors and I'm just gonna cut along and it's almost even cut through because it makes the trimming so easy, but I'm just gonna cut along that outer edge and then, cause there's gonna be obviously an inner and an outer part for that particular die. And then I will just cut along the outer side so it's on the bigger side. You'll see why when we do our shaker. Let me know if you have any suggestions for the acetate because I love it for doing fun shapes for the shakers if you wanted to do a fun shape, but I haven't quite figured out how to do it with the embossing machine if you wanted a unique shape that really was snug with the die. Okay, so as you can see, this has a protective film on the front and back that makes it foggy, so you will want to take that off later or before you construct your card. So now what I want to do is I'm going to place my card here and we're simply going to start building it up and I think it's going to be really, really fun. So taking my tape and all I'm going to do is just tape, actually I'm going to tape the top just so it stays and then I will, it's hard for me to tape the bottom though because I need to work so closely with the bottom. So I'm just gonna do this for now. Okay, so really quickly, we can set some of these things to the side and bring in all of our shapes here. So I'm gonna grab some glue. Later, we will cut the little pocket out in just a bit, but let's grab some glue and start really constructing so we can build the front of this shaker card up and it's gonna turn out really cute. Okay, so I'm bringing in some glue here and I'm going to take this original little white piece and again, I was saying that I wanted to use this as a template and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my glue and just give a little bit along the edges here and I'm just going to glue this right to my card base. Will be white on white but again it's just acting as a little template here so lining it up right at the edges here and gluing down okay that looks great and do any shifting that you need to do but that looks 
looks pretty good to me. Okay, so I have my little template here. It's just um, very subtle, but it's there because it's going to help with this next part. So the next thing I want to do is I want to take some foam strips and build up my edges so I have a little basin area in the middle with walls around it to place my really fun stars and make a really nice shaker. These little foam strips are new to me, but I'm absolutely obsessed with them. I'm really loving them. I'll link them down below. They have made shaker cards or just working with smaller things in general really easy. In this case, it makes shaker cards so quick and easy to do because they are just really, really thin strips. And a lot of the time, that's what you're you're needing for the surrounding area. So I'm just gonna trim these to size. Now you wanna make sure that you are covering all areas here because if, if there are any openings, your fill, whatever you choose, in my case it will be stars, but you don't want your stars to fall out. So I'm just gonna cover everything and I'm just going to go around and make sure everything is built up, if that makes sense. So I'm just going to go right in the angle here with these last little pieces. Okay. And then save every piece of this. So even though I don't need it anymore for this project, that could really help me with something else in another project. So I'm going to go with a longer strip just so I can have a nice long piece. Oops, I need to realign that just a hair. Okay. There we go. And trim to size, but also making sure there are no gaps. I think I created a little gap there, so I might need just the tiniest of pieces just to build up in there. Okay, where'd you go? Right there, fill it in, done. Okay, and then run this along the bottom, and remember that little piece I just <laughs> cut off? It's going to work perfectly. Oh my goodness, it's perfect. Perfect right there. Okay, so now I don't have any gaps. All of my areas are built up. If you wanted to double it and make it bigger, you can, but I don't think it's quite necessary for this project. Now, you may want to fill your little shaker now, but I have honestly found that to be such a stinker because I find that taking the little paper off of this because it is double adhesive I find taking the paper off is really tricky and if it's already filled on the inside then you're worrying about not only taking it off but being careful so things aren't spilling so I personally like to take my little liners off first and then fill it second now you also pose the problem of your fill sticking to the sticky once it's exposed but you know what you just have to pick a way to do it and be patient nonetheless so I personally like to peel it off first but go ahead and approach it any way you'd like Okay, I'm going to use my little weeding tool just to help grab the little edges to peel off and reveal that additional sticky side. Okay, I have found using my fingernails makes it take so much longer. And one of you a while ago let me know about using this with foam adhesive dots, so I am using with the strips as well because it is... A game changer I love it okay last couple pieces and we'll be ready to fill now when I was originally making this card I filled it with just some gold circular sequins and my husband was saying how cute would that look with stars inside though because then it would be Starbucks right <laughs> and we are giving them Starbucks gift cards so I totally had to definitely listen to him on that and I have these little stars I actually filmed a different tutorial 
and use I bought them for that other tutorial so I had these left over and quite honestly a ton left over so I'm gonna be using stars for everything for the next couple years but I loved that idea so thank you honey because I think that's adorable the next thing I'm going to do actually pause really quickly just so that once these stars are in I can close what I'm going to do really quickly is I'm going to take off that double side adhesive and reveal the clean inside. So, oh, sorry, it's not double side adhesive. It's just the double side, double sided um, cover, if you will. And that just helps keep it nice while you're working with it. Okay. So then I'm going to go ahead and fill and being mindful to try not to get on the outer edge because then it'll just cling to the sides. Ugh, but you know, it's easier said than done sometimes. Adding as much as you want, as much or as little. I like to then take my tweezers and just kind of stick it back in because you don't, you don't want it on your sides and then just kind of press it around as much as you can. Whoops. And there we go. Whoops. Come here, little guy. Okay. I think that looks good. I'm just kind of getting an idea for what that will look like. Uh, and then obviously making a terrible mess in the meantime. Okay, stop while you're ahead. So then I'm going to take that acetate and I'm going to place it. Oh, one of my stars cleaned up. Come here. Maybe I'll just try to shift you all into the middle. Okay. Okay. Now the little stars kind of want to cling up to that acetate as I'm laying it down. So I'm going to try to go fast and there we go. Ugh. Easier said than done. Okay, so then I actually I might go from the bottom and just line it up. Just line, line it up, and as fast as you can, just lay it down. <laughs> there you go. And naturally, if some, see these popped out, that's okay. Um, if some get on your little foam strip, it's not the end of the world. But now, just running that little acetate along the side there. There we go. Now you can also cut this and I almost would recommend this way better. You, I think that when I was doing it the first time I did it this way, cut out that acetate with, you know, one of these dies because then you don't have that double layer. And even though mine isn't, um, you know, breaking, you, know, you don't have to worry about that little score weakening over time, if that makes sense. So you may find that that's a better way to do it. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is place my little top right on here. So I'm simply going to use glue. Go ahead and actually I'm going to do this way. You can use an adhesive of your choice, but Ooh, it works so good. And just a little goes a long way. There we go. There we go. Just a thin, even thinner than that. to place it over and that kind of closes the look of that shaker okay yeah, it just finishes it off really nice and cleaning up anything that I need to how cute does that look oh I love it okay now Let's go ahead and add, now that this is done at the bottom, I'm just gonna place this here. 
I'm gonna go ahead and add the top here. And because we've built this up so much, I'm gonna add the top with some foam tape. That way it is on the same level as the shaker because if not, it's just gonna be laying down below it. And I don't think that looks very good. I kind of want to pop that up so it's, you know, at least close to the same playing field as the rest. So let me grab some foam tape, place it on the back. Let's see, probably about that much. Okay. And then just a little bit to build up those little edges. I might have gotten that a little long. I'll trim that down in just a minute. This side I think will work. Okay, yep, got this a little, little long. Let's see if I go this way if it fits. Oh, you know what, that's fine. Okay, taking off my back pieces. Let me know if you did any end of the year teacher gifts. I thought this was a really fun idea. we have our little lid to our coffee cup there. How sweet is that? I love it. Okay, let's move this up and over for just a moment and work on the little sleeve. So for the sleeve, there are little score lines here, as you can see. So I'm just gonna fold, okay? And then take the other one and fold. sure I hold that correctly. There we go. Okay, now taking my glue, and I'm going to get my bone folder and just give those a nice, nice crease there. Okay, taking my glue, I'm going to add just a little to each of those folds. Okay, whoops, got a little much on that accidentally. So, just wipe that off and wipe it onto the next one. And just additionally add just a tap bit more. Okay. And then what I will do is I'm just going to glue these together because what we're making here, so lining it up, what we're making is that cute little coffee sleeve that they put on your coffee when it just needs a little mitten, right? So that your hands don't get too toasty. Okay, I'm just gonna kind of help that mend together and then give it a moment, but you have your little coffee sleeve. How cute. Okay, now I'm going to, I'm gonna try and free range stamp. Free range stamping is not my favorite and if not, I'll just grab my Misty but let me just try and see if I can. I'm gonna grab, you know what I'll grab is this little coffee cup extra that I had. I always keep my extras just so that I can add further embellishments with them. But let's just tape this down and let's see if I can do a little free range stamping on here because I wanna use a sentiment. Okay, I'll link this down below, but I found this, I have this cute little stamp set. I've used it before in a video, um, but I am going to use the little thanks a bunch. I thought that was so cute. There's other things on here like A plus teacher and um, let's see what other things would, oh, thanks for helping me bloom would be really cute. I'm trying to think in terms of teacher gift. Um, thanks for helping me soar. That one's cute and I've used that before too. So I just placed that thanks a bunch right on my little acrylic block here. And I'm going to use the Memento Tuxedo Black ink. And let's see if I can get a nice clean impression. Actually, you know, I like to stamp or ink up my stamps this way. It's just personal preference. Okay. And if not, I have the Misty and I'm not afraid to bring it out. Because I am not a hero when it comes to this. Okay. So I'm just going to stamp. And I'm gonna stamp this a couple times because I actually have to make four of these. That's not bad. So while I'm in the, uh, while I'm being 
somewhat successful with these. I'll stamp a couple. And we'll see. Let's not get too confident. Okay. <gasps> yes. Okay. Well, you know, practice, practice, practice. Okay. I'm happy with those. So I'm going to grab my paper trimmer and trim this down. And I'll show you where I'm going to put it on the card. And then we need to build up our little inside which is going to be this little coffee card or gift card of any choice holder it's a little pocket okay grabbing my smaller paper trimmer here i'm just going to kind of eyeball this and see if i can make a little banner if you will so i'm going to trim these down a little bit and see what i can do like that and let's see let's go this way and see if I can do a little bit more too let's see I don't feel like it's gonna be and you could of course do scissors but I'm gonna try Oh, that's not bad. I like it. Okay, so I'm gonna really quickly just do this little, you know, I'll do it later. Um, I feel like this part stresses me out a little bit, so I will just do that part later. Okay, then I'm going to take my scissors and create a banner, if you will, just on one end. So I'm just gonna do a little notch and a little notch. do that as clean as I can. I really need to get a little die set for doing banners, but in the meantime, I'm just doing it myself. Okay. That looks pretty good. Okay. So I have my little banner there. And what I'm going to do is I am going to put it over here and then trim it down further. So I think I'm going to bring it up a little bit. Yeah, I like that. I also like that how it is centered on the pinker parts as opposed to this. Do you see where it's kind of on the white? I kind of like where it's kind of framed by the pink. I think little things like that I think make a design a little bit stronger. And I'm just going to add a little glue. Not a lot, just a little. And that banner is not perfect, but you know what? It is made with love. So I'm going to let it hang over the edge there just because I'm going to trim it down just so that it really flows with the, there we go, bring that up a little bit, flows with the angle of the, what's it called? Do, 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 do. What is this little cutie called? <sighs> coffee sleeve. Oh, goodness. Maybe it's the mommy that needs the coffee. Whew. Okay, so I'm just going to take this. Actually, we'll go this way so we can really see. See where I need to trim this down? Okay, so I'm just going to trim that down. Just with some scissors. And then look. I think that's super cute. Super cute. Okay, so then this ends up being a functional sleeve. Now, I will say with the shaker installed on here, it is more of a snug sleeve. You kind of have to convince it that you, it wants to be a sleeve for the shaker card. You know, get talk sweet nothings to it, but you can get it going on there. It will it will go on. Like takes a little bit of wiggling. Gotta break it in, but it does go on and it looks so cute. So I just kind of slowly wiggle it. Kind of going on each side. And you can just get it positioned just right. Okay. There we go. How sweet is that? Thanks a bunch. And then it's a little shaker. 
so cute. Oh my gosh, I love it so much. I think that's super fun. It actually kind of reminds me of, I don't know, for those of you who have the Starbucks app, do you remember when you would fill a coffee cup with stars? Isn't that how it would work? Then you get a free drink. So it's kind of, kind of reminds me of that as well. That is so fun. Okay, so that is the outside of the card. Again, run that in any direction. I thought it was really fun to do a little pattern paper look, but you could definitely work with solids. But I like all that's going on here. I like that we have some florals and then the really um, pretty gingham look and then the shine of the stars I think is really fun and then keeping the sentiment really simple just with some black ink I think that is just the perfect touch okay now what I'm going to do is open up the card because and don't you love that this is functional so on the inside it's wrapped <laughs> okay so then on the inside we need to do our little gift card pocket so let me grab some cardstock for that so i'm actually going to bring in a different pink cardstock than the one i used as the border here and the reason why is this is a little bit heavier of a cardstock and i just wanted something a tad sturdier when building up the gift card holder but shop your scraps anything will work okay really quickly i am going to just run this through my die cut machine cut this out we'll assemble it get the gift card in there and we will call it good okay so i cut that off off camera i also forgot to mention it is a stitched it has a little stitched element on it which is so cute i'll show you in just a moment let me remove this tape carefully there we go set my die to the side and the scraps okay so you can see along the top it has a little stitched um, element there and let me tell you my heart is just all for that I love that so I'm just gonna look at those little score lines to the left right bottom and I'm gonna fold fold along those score marks and I'm gonna grab my bone folder once more just really crease those down and then last one Okay, then with it, this uh, bottom side up where the edges are folded in, we're going to take our glue and just run it along all three flaps. One, oh, that was way too much glue. Okay, let's pretend that didn't happen. It really doesn't take a lot. Sometimes I feel like I have a really good handle on my flow of the glue and sometimes you know it's the opposite okay so I have my little glue there let's turn it over and then you'll just decide where you want this um I'm thinking probably right about here let me straighten that out so that I can align it nicely with the bottom I want to give enough room for the kiddos to write their name at the bottom so that's why I did it here. Okay, and I think that alignment's really nice. I'm just gonna take my bone folder and just help the paper meet paper there. So that glue will just really set. And then we have a pocket for a gift card. <laughs> I mean, and even if you didn't wanna do a gift card, if you, if you were making like a, you know, a birthday card or an, uh, a graduation card and you wanted to put some folded money in there that's so so cute as well it's better than I mean not that just money inside a card listen there's money inside a card is always happiness but how cute would this be right with it folded in there I think that's really sweet okay now bringing in the little gift card so you have your little gift card and it just fits right so I have to get over those little creases. There we go. Fits right there. How cute. Oh, and I love the little at the bottom there. And you could, you know, even stamp on here too. That could be fun. In fact, I have some stickers from this paper pack. Let me see if there's anything interesting that I could put on here. There's some little stickers and I've used a lot of them. I'll link this paper pack down below in case you love it as much as I do. But, oh my goodness, you could add something really cute in there, couldn't you? Hmm. Like even just the little, maybe, I don't know, am I doing too much? Should I stop there? 
but a, like even just a little flower. You could do that, right? I don't know. I might stop there, but I think it would be cute to add a little something inside. But, you know, I'm going to leave it blank and then let the kiddos do what they wish inside. But how fun! I love this. I think this is super cute. I think it's a fun little idea for an end of the year teacher gift. Or if you just want to really brighten someone's day with some... Uh, you know, a little coffee card or a gift card of some sort. Obviously, I think a coffee card is really cute for this idea, but um, I think it's just a really fun idea and a way you can really brighten someone's day. Again, you don't have to do the shaker route at all. You can just, you know, build up with the little dies that it comes with and cut out paper and just build up the paper on there and do other fun things. But I thought the shaker was really fun. Again, I think I would use for the acetate I would use this piece instead because as I was mentioning the using this piece for the acetate then scores in two areas that is so noisy I'm sorry it scores in the outer area and then the inner area and again we cut it along the outer so you know you're still having that major crease on the inside it's not anything you need to worry about visually but you know over time it might weaken um, in that area so I don't think um, it's going to be an issue, but I just want to mention it just because, you know, if you can make yours differently, then maybe you could do that. But hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial. I thought these turned out really, really cute and I need to go and make a few more at this point. So I'm going to go ahead and say goodbye now and continue card making, but please be sure to give this a thumbs up if you were inspired in some way. And don't forget to check out the description box below the video to check out all the things that I use in this video in case you want to recreate this look yourself. Be sure to subscribe if you are just joining for the first time for this video. I'd love to have you and so many fun things are coming up on my channel soon. I'll see you on the next video and thanks so much for watching.